Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's NSHSS webinar. We're thrilled to have you with us. Today, we're going to be talking about how to discover the 21st century global leader inside of you and how to prepare for success in a globally connected world. My name is Dave Santulli. I am the president and founder of United Planet. We're a proud partner of NSHSS. We're also an international nonprofit celebrating 21 years and located in Boston. Our mission as a nonprofit is to create global community, one relationship at a time. And we do that through empowering and connecting global citizen leaders across the world through a, a range of meaningful programs, such as international volunteer programs, virtual internships, and more. Over the last 21 years, we've worked with over 20,000 people in more than 80 countries. So we're super excited to be here with you and have this rich discussion. And we hope you'll join in and share some questions through the chat. Today, we have a very special panel, a global panel, uh, joining us from some different countries. And I would love for us to meet our panelists for today. There we go. Uh, coming all the way from joining us from Colombia, we have Catalina uh, from one of our, our very special partners, Primed. Catalina, would you like to introduce yourself? Of course. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Catalina Chavarria. Uh, I'm located in Medellin, Colombia. I'm the representative of a nonprofit organization. The name is Prime Community. We want to create a global community with opportunities for everyone, but I'm gonna tell you more uh, in a bit. Awesome, thank you so much, Catalina. We're thrilled to have you with us. And Caitlin, love to have you introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I, uh, in high school, I did two United Planet programs. I did a virtual quest in Amman, Jordan, and a traveling quest in Quito, Ecuador. And I'll explain more later. Can't wait to hear more about it. And Kelly, joining us from Honduras. Hi, thank you, Dave. Um, I'm one of the international program coordinators, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit about traveling through United Planet. Fantastic. And Sophia, joining from Guatemala. Hi everyone, welcome once again to our webinar. I'm so glad to share with you more about United Planet. I'm International Program Coordinator and I'm gonna share more about Virtual Quest. Thank you so much. And uh, last but not least, coming all the way from the, the Netherlands, but, but here in Boston with us, we have Lika. Hello, everyone. Um, Dave did an incredible introduction already, but um, yeah. I'm a marketing communications intern. Um, and today I will just keep an eye on the chat. I will send you guys some questions for you to answer. Um, and yeah, I hope we have a good dialogue today. That sounds great. That sounds great. Well, let's let's move forward here. And talk about we're talking about unlocking your potential and discovering the 21st century leader, global leader inside of you. But what does that really mean? What is a, a 21st century global leader? And at United Planet, we have some thoughts around that theme that uh, 21st century global leaders have what we call United Planet competencies, that they are global citizens. And we say that global citizens are clued in, they connect to their local community and global community, they lead within teams and beyond teams, they understand within a global context and across cultural context, they engage, they're active citizens, they get involved, they try to make a difference. 
uh, on important issues that they care about. And they're concerned about developing themselves. And I know all of the members here are very concerned about that from a self-development perspective, from an academic and professional perspective. They think about what skills and competencies they'd like to develop in the future. And that these 21st century global leaders strive to build true partnership, to build trust, respect, understanding and empathy across their communities and across the world. Because at the end of the day, without partnership and collaboration, cooperation, it's very hard to achieve our fullest potential in today's world. So very important uh, to build partnership. And then also to develop 21st century skills, learning how to communicate and collaborate to be problem solvers and critical thinkers and creative thinkers, to have that entrepreneurial mindset and innovative thinking, to know where we need to get information and how to get information through information and media literacy, to have some of those critical uh, technology skills. And, um, and also to have those, those life skills, to be proactive, uh, and, and really assertive in, in trying to see, achieve some of the goals that we have. So these are some of the competencies that we look at. And why is that important? Why do we need that in today's world? Uh, if Feel free to put, put some answers in the chat if, if you feel so inspired. But you know they say that, that more change has happened within the last 100 years than the last 10,000 years and the rate of change is hard to keep up with. And, and I'm sure we all feel it every day. Um, and we know that it, the rate of change and advancement is, is increasing. The world is more connected than ever. So the age old way of education, of rote memorization, memorizing these lists, bring them into school, isn't gonna prepare the leaders that we need in the world so that we can embrace the challenges that we face, all of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in areas like education, health, environmental sustainability, equity, economic development, peace and security. There's no way we can tackle those goals if we don't have a, 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 this kind of pers perspective and these kind of competencies. So we're super excited. Now, how do we, develop these goals. At United Planet and these competencies, at United Planet, we believe that the best way is through real life experience in the real world, getting out into the world, either virtually uh, or physically getting out there, joining organizations. So what we're gonna do next is invite Kelly to share with us about our travel quests, our international volunteer and international internship opportunities across the world. Kelly, would you take it from here? Thank you, Dave. Um, hi, I'm so glad to get a chance to speak to all of you. Uh, I'm new to the Quest team and I have really enjoyed learning about all the programs and opportunities that we have available worldwide. And I'm really glad to get the chance to tell you a little bit about them. Um, for travel abroad, we have three types of Quest programs that you can do independently with a friend or as a group. Uh, there are short-term programs that are about one to 12 weeks long <clears throat> um, and involve volunteering, cultural activities. They can have optional language classes and add on, you can add on excursions. Um, these placements are a great introduction to the country and the community that you're visiting. We have midterm programs that are uh, anywhere from four to 16 weeks long and are focused on immersing into the culture and becoming an important part of the day-to-day -day during your stay. And then our long-term programs can be anywhere from six to 12 months. And they are all about living abroad in a new environment while volunteering and finding community in a new culture. All of our programs accept volunteers that are aged 
18 and older, um, but I know that we have probably a lot of high school students participating today in the webinar. So we do have three destinations that will accept volunteers who are um, age 15, 16, 17, and then 18 and up. Um, those destinations are Peru, South Africa, and Japan. We would recommend Peru, particularly for volunteers who are looking to learn about global health. Um, there are, uh, but there's also projects related to children, education, animals. You could help the medical staff by working at the intake or triage desk and practice your leadership skills by conducting educational workshops on preventative medicine. Um, maybe you can develop your collaboration skills at one of the two animal sanctuaries, rehabilit rehabilitating wildlife um, in South Africa. Uh, that's a great destination for sports lovers uh, who want to learn about using sports and youth development programs. This is a great way to strengthen your social skills. You, uh, they have programs around soccer, cricket, field hockey, tennis, rugby, and netball. And there's also projects related to children and education, uh, working in children's homes or local schools. In Japan, there are projects related to environmental sustainability, children, education, and the arts. Maybe you wanna work two weeks at the tea plantation learning about sustainable agriculture, and then you could exercise your creativity and learn about bonsai trees in an artisan workshop. Um, I will note that Japan is currently evaluating volunteers on a case-by-case -case basis because they have only recently opened tourists and the program is still gaining momentum. In order to start the formal placement process, um, you'll need to enroll online and pay a deposit. If you enroll for a destination like Japan, and for some reason they cannot accept you as a volunteer for your desired dates, you can either defer and use your deposit um, for up to a year, or you can apply to your second choice destination. We typically can place you in the destination you want for the dates you want. But uh, we are working with real NGOs that are in the field, and there are many factors that can affect program availability. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, I can show you here. Um, you may be wondering, OK, I've enrolled. You've made me fill out all this paperwork. Um, I've gone to the orientations. I've bought my tickets. I'm ready to go. What is it going to look like when I'm there? Uh, we have over 40 partners, so each program is unique. But uh, here's a sample itinerary of what two weeks in Peru might look like to give you an idea. Um, you could take some Spanish classes and get a crash course, uh, try to improve your Spanish. Um, you also can go and have extracurricular activities that are optional add-ons. You can do cooking classes, food tastings, quechua lessons, plant pan flute lessons, salsa lessons, visits to traditional central markets. Um, in Peru, you would stay with a host family. Other projects, you might stay in a hostel or group housing. It depends on the program and how it's run. Um, and then there's also optional excursions to destinations in Peru, like Machu Picchu, the Rainbow Mountains, the Saker Valley. Um, those can all be added on for additional cost. So at United Planet, our job is to make sure that you are safe and supported during your quest, but we also wanna help you get outside of your comfort zone and really experience something different. We have over 20 years of experience matching volunteers and NGOs in order to create the best outcome for both. So I really look forward to helping you on your uh, preparation for your quest. Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, Kelly. That was a really nice overview. And I'm sure we'll have some questions, you know, throughout either during the chat or, um, uh, during the Q and A time, um, you know we are getting some interesting responses so oh. far with regards to the skills and to the countries because it's pretty diverse when it comes to the countries. We have interest in Japan, Peru, and South Africa, which is always good. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to help them very much learn more about the countries and the programs. And in terms of the skills, I'm seeing that communication is a very popular one. So I'm sure we can help with that as well. Yes, yes. I mean, communication is key, you know, through this kind of work and collaborating across the world and particularly those cross-cultural communication skills and team building skills. They're essential in anything that we need to do, you know, in our lives. Um, thank you so much, Leek. I um, look forward to having the discussion around some of those questions and comments. Um, Sophia, uh, you've been really taking a lead within the team on 
our virtual internships and virtual volunteering. We'd love to hear a little bit more about um, our virtual quests. Thank you, Dave. Hi, guys. So I answered a question asking if we have virtual opportunities. And I said yes. And right now is the time to share more. So it's a little bit different for travel, but it still is a very great opportunity to develop any skills. The minimum time for virtual quest is one month and the maximum is six months. Uh, it's very flexible. You can choose less than 10 hours per week or the maximum 40 hours um, per week. We have or I bring two great programs that we have in the virtual. The first one is in Ghana. They work with a special organization uh, to dedicate to breathe in and bring more opportunities and best tutor for kids that grow up in um, these managed communities. So this is a great program because they have children in education and global health. Sometimes they combine these two fields. So for example, maybe you can work with them creating a material for health. Malaria, it's a very common disease there. So you can create some infographics, research information, or also translate some education. So that um, work, it could be like I said before, infographic or maybe PowerPoint, you can share with the teachers so the teacher can use frequently with the kids. So you not only combine two fields, you also develop new skills like creativity, also communication, researching, translation. I know some people fear or feel very nervous when you talk about and with other countries that English is a second language, but that it's a very great experience to know more about cultural and language. So that is the first example. And the second is in Costa Rica, that is in Latin America. And that program helps and give support to oncological patients. As you know, in Latin America, health is a little lack. And for some people, it's very hard to get uh, a good hospital for cancer treatment. So this organization works in prevention, which is great. So as well, you have to do research, translation, and a specific type of cancer so they can blog in or put in in social media. This year, we have two volunteers that work, help them in fundraise. It's amazing how they can give ideas, uh, also create a GoFundMe page so they can start to fundraise money. So again, you combine two fields, education and health. And also you development, not only creativity, only, uh, sorry, creativity and <laughs> smart ways to fundraise money and support. And I know this sounds great. And you think uh, I'm under 18, I'm 16, 17, how I can help to fundraise money or that I too smart or I don't feel uh, good enough sometimes or maybe I'm not have to hold knowledge, but don't worry. Our partners are more than glad to have more help. And the idea is that, that you can start learn and support. So that's the reason that I'm going to say this uh, quick, that we bring Catalina. She is our partner with Virtual Quest, and she works with a lot of under 18 volunteers. So she can explain you more. And the idea is you can feel comfortable and secure to do Virtual Quest. And I think the virtual quest is a great start for you to have this volunteer experience and then you can go and trial like Caitlin. So let us know if you have any questions about virtual quest and the fields that we have. Absolutely. It's, it's a wonderful way to have a meaningful, you know, virtual internship 
make a difference, you know, have a global experience. And we're so glad to have uh, Catalina here with us uh, from uh, Columbia, from Prime Community that share about the great work that you're doing. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Catalina. Okay, hi, and thanks for your invitation. Uh, as I told you before, my name is Catalina. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm located in the city of Medellin in Colombia. And I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to talk about a, a little bit about Prime Community is the organization I represent at this moment. We are a global community uh, with opportunities for everyone. We want to build this community. So next slide, please. Okay, uh, who are we? We are an organization that is oriented towards the development and execution of social impact projects, mainly here in Medellin, but we want to expand to other parts of Colombia. We offer free English classes, a focus on community tourism and life skills development in vulnerable neighborhoods. Okay, next slide. Okay, <clears throat> we offer opportunities uh, through English and tourism. The name of our main project is the Storytellers. So basically, as I told you before, we teach English and life skills. So the idea is that the people connect their personal and community stories to design immersive tours. So you can see here a lot of creativity with this kind of uh, things, with this kind of services, cultural exchange events as well for foreigners and create local initiatives. The idea is to connect the tourists with the stories of those territories and share their incredible social transformation processes. Next slide, please. Okay, so we have this main project, but we also have projects in alliance with other nonprofits, local nonprofits. We require the volunteer support in the following areas. Okay, first of all, uh, we work with allies that they have obviously different departments and uh, the volunteers help us with different kinds of tasks for those departments. So for example, education and opportunity for vulnerable youth. We have projects related to vocational orientation and uh, we, want, we support them as well, building their own uh, life plans, right? We have as well children protection in which we restore the rights of children who have suffered uh, any kind of violence. So we work with this nonprofit, this kind of nonprofits as well. Okay, and we have management uh, areas. We have management projects, digital marketing and fundraising campaigns as Sophia was telling before. So yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. Next slide, please. So, to tell you more about the main functions the volunteer can support us, uh, support us with, it could be the translations. For us, that is very important from Spanish to English. So for example, in this case, we need the volunteers to have uh, an intermediate level of Spanish. Uh, we also have social media management. We uh, sometimes need uh, the support with the communications plan. Graphic designs as well with basic tools or programs mentoring to support school students. It could be in languages or uh, maths, internet research and fundraising campaigns. So the volunteer qualities that we hope the volunteers have has a, are like to be creative, to be proactive, responsible, very important to be committed and reliable, empathetic as well, flexible, uh, patient and charitable. So next one. And I'm going to resume the next one because I think there is a lot of text, but I'm going to resume. Okay, the skills volunteers might learn uh, supporting us, it could be to be more empathetic because you are going to connect with the histories and backgrounds of our beneficiaries, uh, such as children and youth. Uh, you are going to develop creativity and design skills because we need uh, some graphics for our social networks, brochures and portfolios. So for, uh, for us, this is very important because you are going to see that we are using your designs in our commercialization area, right? Okay, to learn about branding as well, to learn as well how to use fundraising platforms. 
not just to do it, you are going to teach you how to do it, okay? About time management as well, because you are going to know how to distribute your time to do the assigned tasks. Flexibility, because you are going to collaborate in different tasks for these different areas within the organization. To be responsible, you are going to understand that your tasks are very important for us, uh, for the, our objectives. You are going to learn how to work in a team. And you, I always say to the volunteers that you are part of the team, right? So you're going to know that the impact of uh, your capabilities and skills uh, have for us, because we need that, we need that uh, for the proper operation of our projects. You're going to uh, learn about communication skills because you're going to present your progress to people in management positions. And you're going to practice as well, some Spanish if you want to, and uh, to be more agile in doing some research. So yeah, the, thank you, and I think that's all. I was just gonna say incredible impact and experience you know, for, for the volunteers and interns. It's really great work that you're doing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, well, let's um, talk with Caitlin and we're, we're so glad to have you with us and to hear you share about both your experience with the international volunteering in, in Ecuador and also your virtual Quest experience in Jordan. Thanks for being here, Caitlin. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, you can go to the next slide. I have some pictures as well. Okay, wonderful. Awesome. So I am a second year at Northeastern University and I'm studying uh, public health and international affairs. And my quests actually helped me pick these majors. So they're very good for skill building as well. Uh, my first quest was in 2019. So right before COVID hit, I went to uh, Quito, Ecuador um, and I did two programs. So I did um, a little bit of each. Um, I worked at a local clinic um, in a poor, more impoverished area of Quito, um, more in the outskirts of the city where I helped with taking vitals, uh, making sure patients had their records, um, any basic translations. And I also worked in a daycare slash kindergarten where we helped plan activities for the kids and make sure they got all their meals they needed for the day. So my day was uh, very packed. So we'd start out the day, I think it was like 9 a.m. is when we'd have to be out to school and we'd spend the first half of the day in the um, either school and or the clinic. And then the site, we'd have lunch. We'd go down to like um, the local plazas or downtown and get lunch. And then we'd go to Spanish school, which was I believe three hours of, of intense Spanish skills, but it was really helpful in the end. Um, I also stayed with a local host family. Um, my host mom was super nice. She actually texted me a couple weeks ago, just checking in. Um, so overall, that was a great experience. I went with one of my friends from elementary school. I, was, I wanted to go and she was like, hey, I'm interested in going too. So we went together. And then um, the year after COVID hit and I was like, I really wanna do something. I wanna make a difference and I wanna go abroad, but obviously I can't. So I saw United Planet had the virtual option. And I so I started looking into that. And I was really interested in teaching English, uh, kind of mixing it up and trying something different. So I got my TEFL certification and started, which is teaching English as a foreign language and started looking into programs. And I found the program in Amman, Jordan. Um, and it was at a local nonprofit school, which focuses um, specifically on teaching English to refugees and migrants. Um, most of my students were from Syria or Palestine, uh, the Palestinian territories. And it was an amazing experience just to be able to create the lessons and learning what responsibilities go into lesson planning and being a teacher, as well as teaching the students, coming up with games and activities. And it was a real learning curve at first, learning what the students like, their language skills, but overall it was an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, so I have some pictures here. Um, on the left, this is a picture of me this summer, I actually went to visit them because I was doing a study abroad for my university in Amman, Jordan. So I was able to visit them, so it was awesome. And then the other three pictures are of me when I was in Ecuador. The upper right is of me with my host mom and my friend who went with me. And the bottom right is me at the clinic as well. And if you guys have any questions, you can put them in the chat and I'll answer. That, that's amazing. And I was just wondering when you decided to do the study abroad, you know, what in, in Amman, uh, what was that process like? And I wonder if the internship had anything to do with it. 
Yeah, so the internships kind of inspired me to go and do study abroad. I actually studied abroad in five countries so far in my undergrad. I studied in Greece, Ghana, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan, and Egypt. Um, so after I first went to Ecuador, I knew I wanted to do work abroad. So it, it inspired me to pick up the international affairs um, minor as well and continue my study abroad. So that's definitely been a big inspiration. That is amazing. And uh, you're, you're a true 21st century global leader. You know, it's really phenomenal. Um, Thank you. Well, I, I know the next part um, are some questions, but, um, you know, just to spend some time together uh, discussing any questions that we have. And uh, so I thought maybe these photos are so great. Why don't we stay on this slide for a little bit uh, and then we can move on and, and share some of the others. But um, while while Caitlin is is sharing, um, I, I just like to ask and I just to jump in and ask a question, then we could go to some in the chat. And, you know, for the other panelists, feel free to also ask some questions. But what was your you know biggest challenge um, entering either the, the virtual uh, or the internship and, you know, the, 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 the travel quest or the, the virtual quest, any challenges and, um, you know, how do you see each kind of helping you in the future? Yeah, so there were definitely a lot of challenges um, for the Spanish one. So I'd taken, or the keto one, I'd taken Spanish in high school, but this was my first real immersion Spanish experience. So I was a little nervous of how my Spanish skills were gonna be. Uh, I know I had to take a placement test to get um, to like get my level for the Spanish classes, but I was really nervous. I knew my host mom didn't speak any English whatsoever. So I knew I'd be spending my entire trip in Spanish. Um, so that was a little nerve wracking, but I learned so much. I was able to quickly adapt and learn the language much more than I thought I would. And I was actually able to go back to my high school and become a translator for um, students who had just immigrated from Central and South America, which was an amazing opportunity. Um, but led to language was definitely probably the biggest challenge. And then for my other virtual quest, I'd say probably just communication because this was back when um, we were getting used to Zoom and uh, not being able to see each other in person. And so just adapting to using Zoom, figuring out what communication tools they liked, such as WhatsApp. Um, I know we tried Facebook Messenger for a while for video calls to see if that would work because their Wi-Fi at the, at the time was not great because they weren't used to like doing video calls uh, for people, especially from across the world. So I'd say that was definitely a big challenge, but I feel like I've grown a lot and been able to use technology to my advantage, um, along with like creating different lesson plans and figuring out what platforms work. Wow, it must've been amazing that, you know, work and teach some of the refugees coming in from Syria and, you know, different areas. Yeah, I learned so much from them. They're amazing. Wow, wow. It's incredible. Um, well, let's hear some questions from the from the chat. If if you all wanted to share, Lika or Sophia, if there are any some questions. I haven't been answered in the Q and A section yet, um, but I did notice. I asked what kind of programs or projects they might be interested in, um, and Malik. Uh, said in education and outreach and cultural exchange is what they were interested in. Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing because we're all about intercultural communication, intercultural exchange as well. Even in our virtual quests, you know, you still get to have that international and intercultural um, communication with the host organization. Um, so yeah, I think that would be a really good match if we, because uh, we have pro projects in education and in children, but like children, and we have sustainable development. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different things that might work for Malik. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, well, I'd love to ask uh, Catalina a question in, in terms of, you know, what does the impact look like that some of the, the volunteers and interns can bring um, and, you know, are the requirements different for any of the different types of projects that you have? Okay, so for example, sometimes the impact, it is not related directly with the time, but with the commitment, right? So yeah, um, it is more related to the importance those tasks uh, have for us for uh, to achieve our strategic goals. 
So yeah, um, I want to talk about, for example, a translation. Uh, maybe it could be like a basic task, but uh, you don't know, uh, or the volunteers usually don't know the importance that this task have for us. So for example, uh, if a volunteer takes some time to do this translation, we take this translation to put it in, um, in our campaign, in our fundraising campaign, and they are helping us to reach uh, the different kind of donors we have. So I show the volunteers like, okay, look, uh, you are doing this for us. Uh, we didn't do it, you are doing it. So you are creating an impact uh, to help us, right? For example, with the graphics, I show to the volunteers, okay, we are putting your graphics in our social networks, in our commercial brochures, in our portfolios. So the volunteer says, okay, I, I didn't know that this it could be very important for you, but I say, obviously, the things you are doing for us has a great impact uh, for the different projects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, you're really kind of joining the front lines of nonprofit initiatives in a variety of communities across the world. It's, uh, it's been amazing to see some of the impacts that the, the volunteers and interns have, have developed. Mm -hmm. um, Caitlin, I, I was wondering, since we have so many folks out there from maybe different parts of, of the country, um, do you have any advice on, you know, uh, what you recommend uh, when someone who's, to someone who's thinking about this kind of experience, uh, anything from your, as, as you thought through it, that, that might be helpful to share uh, with everyone out there? Yeah, I think uh, my biggest tip is just explore your interests. Like high school is a time to see what you're interested in, see what you like. Um, through my quests, I was able to explore education, global health, um, and childcare. Um, and I was able to help pick what I wanted to do in university, which ended up being global health. Um, so it's definitely a time to explore. So if there's something you're passionate about, I would go towards that. That's really, really amazing. And, and just curious, you, you mentioned a lot of different destinations, you know, not just with, with our programs, but beyond. Was there any, you know, was it your passion of, and curiosity? What kind of drew you to these diverse places? Yeah, so my university has lots of different programs ranging in uh, length from one month to a full semester. Um, and after going to Quito, I knew I wanted to keep traveling and I wanted to keep exploring. And obviously the pandemic put a little bit of a damper on that. But as soon as I got to university and travel restrictions started opening up, um, I'd already had the intercultural communication skills. I'd gained some of the leadership skills. So I wanted to put more of those to use and uh, travel more and explore. No, that's great. And anything else just kind of comparing and contrasting the in-person travel experience with the virtual experience. I know you touched on it a bit, but you know, you've had both of those and you have such a unique perspective. Um, and, and just wanted to, you know, in terms of the, the impact on you, it sounds like they were both meaningful, but any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'd say one of the biggest misconceptions is that you can't make as big of an impact virtually. And I would say this is definitely not true. I feel like I was able to make an impact on each and every student I interacted with uh, virtually in Amman. Um, so I feel like that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Um, and the programs are just so different. I, another big difference is just being in the country and being able to explore on your own. But as for volunteer wise, you're able to make the same impact. You're able to still make the same connections with people and gain the same skills. It's wonderful. Still build some of those those wonderful relationships uh, with people. Well, let's shift over to Catalina, and you know we know there are different types of projects that you have. Some working directly uh, with children at projects, and some kind of supporting the organizations. Um, what are the kind of minimum hours per week, and some of the logistical things that? someone thinking about a virtual internship or virtual volunteer experience might need to know? Okay, about the minimum time, uh, we usually recommend a 10 hours a minimum. Mm -hmm. However, for example, for the mentoring to support school students, 
we are very flexible because uh, sometimes the volunteer just can like after 4 p.m. depending on the, on the place they are located. So we need to do the match uh, between the volunteers and our beneficiaries, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if the volunteers choose like to do a uh, mentoring, uh, we um, fix like a kind of schedule, right? Where for the children and for the volunteers, and it could be like just once per week or twice per week, uh, from four hours to eight hours, right? But in the other kind of task, uh, it is okay, a uh, minimum like eight to 10 hours. Uh, with, this kind, uh, with this time, with this duration, uh, it could have uh, like a big impact uh, and big results. Uh, as I told you before, it is not like, uh, not too much related with the time, but with the commitment, okay? Well, that's great, that's great. Um, well, just checking in if, if there are any other, I, I saw you maybe wanting to raise your hand there, Lika. Yeah, I've got, I've got two questions uh, from the chat. The first Wonderful. one is how we guarantee the safety of the participants while they're abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would one of our panelists like to take it? I'm, I'm always happy to jump in, but go ahead, Kelly or Sophia, if you wanted to. Yeah, I could talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> so um, you will receive an orientation before you travel where we have our safety tips and guidelines. Um, also, though, we are working with partners that we've generated a relationship with. Um, these aren't people that that we barely know. Um, some of our other team, I'm newer, so I haven't traveled, but some of our team have traveled to these uh, destinations. I know Dave has personally um, really fostered these partnerships um, and they've been going on for years. So these are places that we really trust and we're constantly evaluating the programs, obviously for safety. We follow all of the State Department guidelines, um, but I think it's really our reputation and the reputation of the partners that we work with that helps ensure your safety. Um, the biggest concerns that we have about safety are actions of the volunteers typically so maybe you know we advise during the orientations like how to avoid accidents um how to avoid sickness from certain foods or or it's you know how to avoid any reckless behavior that might put you in danger but as far as um your experience that you're having um we do everything we can to ensure your safety and your safekeeping yes yes and you know we're we're really fortunate to have country coordinators in our different countries and partners who, as Kelly mentioned, we work with for many years. For example, Pablo in, in Ecuador, we've been working together for over 15 years. Um, and we also have developed uh, safety and risk management protocols. Uh, I'm not sure we didn't talk about it too much uh, because I think we're looking at some of the the summer break, winter break, spring break programs, but we also have a six month and one year program uh, that we run that's been in existence for over 70 years. Um, and we're, we're part of a group of organizations that uh, runs this program. And there, there are a lot of uh, safety and risk uh, management discussions that we have. So that's really a top priority for us, uh, the number one priority. and. Um, we, we really care about it a lot. Um, Lika, was there another question or were both the questions kind of related to that? Okay, um, go ahead. Um, another one is, um, is it recommended to go to countries where you have more knowledge of the language? And to what extent would a foreign language course be required? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can answer that question because it's very, frequently so it depends for example we have some countries in a specific programs that require uh, basic or intermediate Spanish or Japanese but if you really want to know the culture that would be great and it doesn't matter if you don't speak that language we also have the country coordinator speak English the supervisor too. And if you're gonna stay with a host family, one person of the host family speak English. So you always um, 
can speak English, but also is a good way to start to learn new language because if everyone speak English, when you're gonna start to speak in and learn new language. So don't worry about it, uh, just in Global Health, that it's um, required basic intermediate Spanish in Peru because you have to talk with the patients and the doctors. So if you want to work with children education, community development or environmental and sustainable, don't worry about the language. That's great. I was wondering if Catalina had any thoughts, you know, on that topic. Yes, I agree with Sofia. Um, there is one thing, for example, in my presentation, uh, we have different kind of tasks, uh, for example, translations, right? And uh, mentoring. So for this kind of uh, tasks, uh, we need like an intermediate level because you are going to interact directly with children that cannot speak in English. However, for the other kind of tasks, uh, for example, social media management, graphic design, internet research, and fundraising campaigns, there is no problem at all if you cannot speak in Spanish. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm just switching to this slide, by the way, uh, not because we're going to wrap up within the next minute, but to, so you could see some of the contact information as we're, we're chatting here. Um, but since we have Caitlin with us and you know you had done these programs too, if, if you have any perspective, because I think that's a great question um, and love to hear any, any input you have. Yeah, so on the safety one, I can speak to that one first. I definitely felt safe. Uh, again, obviously this is for the uh, in-person quest, but I definitely felt safe. Uh, my host mom was always accessible um, along with the coordinator. So my coordinator was actually, um, out of the country or not out of the country out of the city for a first few days but he enlisted a different um like someone he was working with and that uh person was always with us he made sure we got there every single day he we had all his contact contact info so everything i felt safe uh, i knew who to contact and in addition the people back at united planet are also there as well so i could always just email them if i had a question and then as for the language requirement um Again, it's really an immersive experience. So for me, I was really happy that I was able to speak Spanish the whole time and you do learn a lot. So I think even if you come in with beginner Spanish skills or beginner Japanese skills, it's a really good experience just to try your best and no one's gonna judge you. So it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, you know, I had ju just from a personal example, lived in Spain and studied a little Spanish before going there. So it was helpful as a little base. But when I first went to Japan, I didn't speak any of the language, but I just learned it through interacting with the people. And when I came back, it, it just, you, you learn, for example, the, the grammar by innately hearing it. And it's, it's totally different. It's just more natural to you. So um, in a way, just going there and learning a, a language from scratch is also a great way because it becomes more natural and innate so that when you do want to take some formal study of grammar and so forth, it'll just make more sense. And, and you'll just, you know, want, want to do it that way because that's the way you, you know it's supposed to sound. Um, so there's a great advantage to going in fresh to a place as well. Well, I know we're, we're coming closer in on time, but I did want to check in uh, with Lika to see if there are any, uh, or Sophia, any other questions? And, and also, uh, if the panelists wanted to ask you, had any burning questions they wanted to ask, feel free. Question that popped up in the Q&A. So there's no unanswered questions there and neither is there in the chat. So unless anyone here has any questions for each other or anyone else has a burning question, feel free to let that know now so that we can process those as well. I have a question for Catalina, actually. Um, Sophia and I are working on some presentations on tips for volunteers as they're coming into sometimes that third week of virtual volunteering and maybe they feel like they now understand how to complete the tasks, but they'd like to go a little deeper and understand more about the project or more about the country, Colombia. Um, do you have any tips or are there anything that a volunteer has done that's really um, 
allowed you to kind of give them a deeper experience beyond just doing tests? Have they participated in other virtual events or anything like that? Yes, uh, for example, uh, when the volunteer starts like doing this uh, virtual experience, at the beginning, we try to them to connect with uh, the things we do, with the essence of our organizations, uh, our organizations and our allies. So we talk about how, uh, sorry, who are we and uh, what do we do? Uh, like for them to, to know in a deeper way uh, and to connect with our beneficiaries. So the idea, for example, I told you about these storytellers. Uh, we are going, uh, we are giving English classes in different vulnerable communities. So for example, we want uh, for them to connect with these people, uh, with our students uh, from these vulnerable communities to have a direct interaction. Uh, for example, just to practice, to help them practice English, right? Basics English basic English or intermediate English. So yes, we want to connect with the direct beneficiary, beneficiary right? Uh, so in that case, uh, the volunteer start like feeling, okay, uh, now I'm knowing more about the impact I'm creating because I'm meeting uh, the person who is going uh, to be, um, who is going to have benef beneficiaries, sorry, who is going to have a, um, results, right? Uh, and the organizations who are making it possible, right? So yes, uh, for me, that is the best uh, way of doing it, for them to connect directly uh, with the beneficiaries and to understand more about them. Wonderful. That's great. Um, well, I, I wanted to take a moment here to just mention, um, how proud we are to be partners with the National Society of High School Scholars and, and how much we, we share a belief in that mission um, of, of building and, and preparing leaders uh, for the future. And, and, um, and as, as part of that effort, uh, we're trying to offer as many scholarships as possible to make these programs accessible. And, Kelly, would you mind sharing a little bit about some of the uh, scholars we have, uh, the scholarships we have with our wonderful uh, partner? Yes, of course. Um, so as Dave mentioned, we really appreciate this partnership with NSHSS. And as a member of NSHSS, um, you can apply to one of three types of scholarships. Uh, we have one full scholarship for any short term volunteer abroad or internship abroad um, that falls within the one to three week uh, duration. Then there's five $500 scholarships for any short term or long term volunteer abroad internship abroad quests. Uh, they can be within the one week to one year duration. And then there are five $250 scholarships for any virtual volunteer and internship quest um, ranging from one month to six months. Uh, in order to be eligible for these scholarships, you just need to be a member of NSHSS and be 16 or older. Um, the website also details, I think someone is, is going to share the link to the scholarship page. Um, but that website also details which quest destinations are specifically eligible for scholarships. And then the requirements of the applicants are to uh, submit a prompt response of 500 words to the following question. How will your experience living and serving abroad in a different culture inspire and enrich your academic and professional pursuits as an NSHSS scholar. Describe in detail. Then you'll also include a color headshot, academic resume, a current transcript, uh, an educator recommendation, and parent approval prior to applying. Um, you must be departing for your quest between April 15th, 2023 and December 31st, 2023 in order to apply. Applications already opened. They opened on November 9th, and the closing date is March 15th. 
If uh, for some reason you do not receive a scholarship or you are unable to apply, we still want to reward NSHSS members and offer a 10% discount off of United Planet short-term programs um, and internship, uh, short-term volunteer and internship abroad programs that are year-round. 10% off of virtual volunteer intern and internship programs year round and 5% off of United Planet's long term quest. So when I say year round, I mean like on a rolling basis, the year long program actually has a 5% discount. Um, and uh, those discounts can't be combined with scholarships, but we just want to know you to know that we appreciate you and we appreciate this partnership. So um, we're happy to continue working with you and seeing how we can get you to connect with one of these experiences that we have available. Absolutely. And we just wanna encourage you to keep developing on your leadership journeys uh, and, and contribute what you can and learn what you can. Um, as you know, we're a nonprofit. We're here to, to serve you and, and together we, we look forward to serving communities across the world and, and building bridges uh, of partnership and friendship across the world. So we're, we're very grateful that you joined us today and I'm really grateful to our panelists as well, um, Catalina and Caitlin and of course, Kelly and, and Sophia and Lika and and, and our, our partner, NSHSS, uh, we, we really enjoy our partnership and we're big fans of the work that you, the very important work that you do. Um, so please reach out, we're here for you. We wanna work together um, as, as a global community and uh, keep up all the, the hard work and wonderful work that you do. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your, your night and, and day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.